Yeah, and we were we were sort of connecting with all of these folks in Germany, and uh, so yeah. So what was that like for you? You were sort of you were having to kind of uh, keep in mind, right? What were what were all these folks in Berlin doing, and how were we connecting to them? So. What was that experience like for you to kind of have to, to manage that or, I mean, we didn't do that on the river semester, no. not not like live no, streaming. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. New. so that was kind of a new thing, right? Yeah, that was new and it was, I did my absolute best to clean up my language and my discussions, <laughs> I really did. Um, but there's there's a certain amount of candor that happens in a boat that yeah. I just get comfortable. I yeah. mean, my, nobody's ever said that I, don't have a foul mouth, uh -huh. um, but but there's there's a level of candor right that comes with I guess when I'm comfortable, that just kind of naturally happens, and it's not good or bad. It's just yeah. how I speak. Yeah. Um, so you're saying that Berlin got a little flowery language? A little bit, yeah. I was really hoping their English wasn't as, as great as I know it's it is. Pretty good. It's I, pretty good. No, I I'm aware of how good it is. Bomb. Oh yeah. No, they, This noise, the, the sound of the current, mm. it's just a part of what, you know, you and I are talking about, there's mm. this constant presence. Yeah. And it's, you know, working, it's it's eroding. Mm -hmm. the, we're yeah. seeing the dredgers and everything. Yeah. It's this constant presence that, yeah. it's yeah. really, a, I like, I think that's partly why we come out, because it dwarfs everything else. We just and we we have to work with its current. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. you don't push the river, as someone no. said. No, no. It's, it's it's beautiful. You know, it's it's a. I feel like the river is a much more living body than mm -hmm. a lot of the lakes you see because there's mm -hmm. so much that goes into it, and mm -hmm. there's so much action here too. I mean, we see so much industry everywhere we go. One of the things that I thought I would be doing when I was out here was like really immersing myself in, in nature, but you can't escape any of the industry anywhere you go here.
Yeah, yeah, I think I like to think about just the flow of water mm -hmm. um, and the ways that, you know, we're on these different islands mm -hmm. and we're experiencing these different landscapes um, that have different meanings to different people, mm -hmm. you know, in particular, you know, to the Dakota mm -hmm. um, and how, um, you know, over time, meaning uh, accumulates mm -hmm. in different places. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. one of the terrible injustices, in my opinion, uh, is the ways that some of those get washed away mm -hmm. prematurely. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I guess I think, you know, it, it's inevitable that some meanings is just going to get lost and washed away, but... Yeah. Uh, we should not let it go too soon. Uh, and um, yeah. so, you know, you think about the project that it is to be human and to attach meanings to places. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons that I'm so attracted to history uh, is um, that I think people in the past were just as robust and smart as uh, they we think of ourselves as now, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they had many of the same problems that we do today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, think about the problems that face our families, uh, problems of the environment. Mm -hmm. um, now there are specific things back then, and there are specific things now, but uh, I think we have a lot to learn from the Dakota, the Ojibwe. Um, about the ways that they approach their problems, and I think we have a responsibility to work uh, in, in partnership um, there, and I think we also have a responsibility to, to, to uh, um, offer ourselves in service mm -hmm. um, to, to ask what are the problems that, that you're facing and uh, how can we help you with, with these problems. Uh, rather than, you know, for instance, coming to them and saying, I've got a solution. Sure. You, you've got to let the solutions, problems and solutions, be driven, not by ourselves so yeah. much. Ahoy! Ahoy! The vast pirates! Shore here, yeah, and uh, we we found water there and a and a porta potty and an actual bathroom. No way. Yeah, that was fine. We we had a chance for some good conversation, as one is likely to do on the river. <laughs> Slow it down there, Noah. This is a no wake zone. <laughs>
it's it's a freeing feeling, you know, being able to because the sand is so soft, it's and it's it's just such a safe environment to do that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. it's not like you're on solid ground where you can hurt yourself. So when you're in the sand, you know, I just jump right off the cliff and uh -huh. try to see how far I can get. And if you tumble down, you tumble down. I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, I guess. Uh, buffer myself more and more. I want to mm -hmm. push, you know, mm -hmm. what I'm capable of, so, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you just got to do some things and, and right. figure out how to survive the consequences right. sometimes, especially when you're under a more controlled situation like we are, mm -hmm. have access to a fire and whatever. Yeah. Do you feel like that makes you feel more alive? you say? Yeah, I, I, it feels more meaningful, I think. Mm -hmm. It's a much different experience than just, uh, I guess, sitting on a couch. Right, and, that's what I'm thinking, you know. Um, could be, you could, could be, be watching a nature documentary, even, mm -hmm. and watching some guy paddle down the river. And, right. But, uh, yeah, if you're feeling warm and cozy and I, I think there's something that you're not getting there. Not understanding. Not connecting with the wildlife. Like yesterday, with the wind, just feeling like... I feel like wind for me is always such an embodied experience because it's like you're... You really feel it. I've, everywhere it's like feeding you. Um, but yesterday, it wasn't like that the wind was so strong, but just feeling it on my face because the rest of our bodies were all, you know, covered up. Um, and the sun, um, and it just felt, it felt so, I mean, it just felt so good. And like, so, I mean, like paddling and you're feeling the wind and very much like in place right there. Um, and just, and I could like smell the, the leaves too in the sun from shore. And it yeah. was so, so nice, yeah. yeah. like the imagined world that we can't escape because it's been such a struggle getting on and off the river because we always like show up to the point and we're like are we here and sometimes like the gps point isn't like quite right and we need to like scope something out or we're like oh this is this is a private drive like are we really allowed to be here um and like you know like going through the mud to like stash the canoes like it definitely feels like mm -hmm. getting on and off the river is the hardest part of the day yeah. it really is or this morning we had like an hour-long paddle just to show up and meet you guys here yeah. Um, yeah. and it's very like the river it's it's hard to get out on the river like this mm -hmm. it's not an accessible space no, no, it isn't. no. yeah it is interesting yeah you think that it being such a major part of this this part of the world. Yeah. That of course it would be all sorts of places, but no, yeah. no, we've been to some weird places. <laughs> some like weird muddy overgrown boat launches. <laughs> and I think that like in terms of visualization, this is going to be really helpful. Like in terms of like, like a lot of what we're doing is like trying to like imagine and visualize and write about like what these different futures look like in a way that's like it includes like facts and hard data, but is like also like compelling imagery and like description, so people can like kind of yeah. identify with them and be right. like drawn in by the, right. the futures like, or, yeah. or drawn away from them hopefully at the worst ones right right, um, right. right. Uh, and so I think that this is like a good a good baseline of like how things are right now and then also being able to imagine like if it got worse and it looked more like the worst parts of the river or if it got better and it looked more like these more scenic beautiful mm -hmm. parts mm -hmm. maybe yeah um, yeah, yeah. So the juxtaposition is actually useful. Okay. 
Cossack going. He's moving forward slow. that time on the Louisiana coast. I, it's made me, I've been intrigued to spend more time down in that neck of the woods. You gonna drive down or fly? Yeah. Yeah. I have people I know who are just working from wherever, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. Especially like now he's going downstream. We're in downwind. So all he's got to do is just basically keep it steering. Oh wow, there's another guy coming after him. I wonder if that's a helper tug. I bet it is. There might be a, uh, when they get up to the next uh, lock. And under, this is the hardest conditions, downwind and downstream because you have the least control uh, under these conditions. So I bet that guy is long just to... Just in case. Everything along the river is connected and it's not just in the places where I am called to along the river that mm -hmm. bad things are happening and it's kind of everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I guess just that, that, that just allows me to get more of a perspective for, for the river and how it's, it works as a whole, you know? Yeah. The radical 
change that I think a lot of us are sort of looking for and like what the, the uprising this summer was definitely asking for is not going to come from Biden in the next couple years like that is not so we have to keep doing our like grassroots like mutual aid keep like working on the ground here together for yeah. sure. Stature for rhyme or for rapture. Got people resigned in the master. My style. Hey I got blisters on me fingers. 